I'm Scott Peterson, and uh, I wanted to take a look at Cab Lab. Uh, and we launched this, and I wanted to show what I was doing with it. Uh, I've been waiting to do this for a long time. So when you first launch it, it looks like this, and what I'm going to do is build up um, the IRs that I use. Um, that I would use and then dial it in real quick uh, using AxEdit to kind of give you an example of how I get it to work for me. So let's get this going. I'm going to, um, well, I'll just do this raw and then show you. So basically, what you do is you come in and you route to where your IRs are. Uh, I actually have the session saved, so I'm going to call it up. So I've kind of shortcutted it. So what you can do is over in this window, you can save a session, open a session, uh, and you can also do a wave conversion to SysX, which is the AxeFX format for cab IRs. Um, I've called up some own hammer uh, mixes. They're in the mic folders. Uh, let's see if I can pull one up. When you pull up there, here, this is the H. When you pull up their uh, IRs, you get the mixes, which are already done. And then you can also get the mics, which are pretty much just the uh, kind of median capture per mic type. So when you look up the way that I'm doing this, I'm going into the mic folder and I'm pulling out the uh, T2 version of the Ribbon 121, which is a Royer 121. I'm pulling out the T2 version of the uh, SM57 and the T2 version of the CMD70. And then, uh, just to save a long, boring journey, um, this is the way that I dial them up. You move these sliders around uh, to give you how much or how little you want of a given IR in the mix. Now, these are I'm mixing in parallel. You can also do a serial combiner where it would run one through the other. Uh, and that's useful for taking like tone matches and putting them um, in series with, let's say, a cab IR. And then you can create a new IR and just run an IR and you don't need to have a tone match block in your preset, which will cut down on your processor um, use inside of your preset. And it, it gives you a little more... Uh, processor to use the different effects and routings if you wanted to do it that way. So basically what you're seeing are these three IRs, which are three different mics, uh, all combined in parallel. And then I'm going to come over here and I tell it I want to send it to my Axe Effects 2. So what I'll do a lot when I'm testing this is I'll just call it a test. you got to have it a name. And then I'll send it to the scratch pad. Now, that might not make sense if you don't know what the scratch pad is, but I just sent it and seeing it's telling me that it's complete. So I am going to go to the Friedman, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the amp type and then change it back. And that defaults everything uh, over here in the advanced tab and everything to their default settings. I'm going to go to user. And at the end, you'll see there's an option for scratch pad. So what I can do now is run different combinations of IRs and hear them in real time. So that's obviously the one I like. Let's go and look uh, at, like, so let's hear a factory cab somewhat similar um, to that. This is a GH30 basket weave. So this would be the... So that's what that one sounds like. Uh, so if I don't like that, I can go into user now, go to scratch pad, 
and I can hear that IR that I sent over from Cab Lab. Now I can kind of do this in real time because it only takes about a second to get that over there. Um, so I'll put Cab Lab back up. So I've sent over, uh, I'll do it again. So I go ahead, I do this, mix it down by sending it to Scratchpad. Boom, it's that fast. Now I like that better, so I'm like, okay, cool. I like that, so I'm gonna give it a name. So I would call it something like, uh, it's own hammer, it's their checker back, Marshall 412, and it's a uh, MPR, which is pre-rolla 55. And then I normally will tell myself what mics I have by putting them in order of preference. So this is just the way that I do it, keep it straight in my head. So I'm going to do a couple of things here. Normally I would save the session. So right here I would save it. So I've got that saved. So if I need to call it back up again, it's already in there. I don't have to do anything. Um, I've got the name over here. A little trick to if you don't have this name. Well, anyways, you can send it to the scratch pad again. You could send it to a user file. So here's the name. You can tell it where. Um, I currently actually have this in user 34, so I'll just send it there again. You can send it to the currently selected slot, which right now is Scratchpad, or you can send it to Scratchpad uh, out of here. But I'm going to send it to 34. Boom. Transfer complete. It's just that fast. Uh, I can also save it off as an independent file in the mix file, and you can see I have a whole slew of them in here. So um, in this one right here, I'll just give you a tip. I've got a uh, pretty cool video coming up on that uh, soon with what that is, which is pretty fun. Um, so that's already there, and I can save that as a file. Uh, the name is already called up. I pull that up in the window. I tell it, yeah, great save. Yeah, I'll replace it because it's already in there. Uh, so now that's saved on 34. So now here's what I'll do. Now this is more of the uh, intermediate to advanced stuff of what I would do. So I had sent that to 34. I would go over to 34, select 34. Here's my IR. <laughs> I like that, um, but maybe I feel it needs a little tweak. So what I've been doing, I'll come into the speaker tab. Um, I've always played with this speaker tab, and I've always played with this part of the speaker tab, uh, especially up here, because to me, I can dial in the way that that tab reacts. Uh, I've always enjoyed that. Uh, I've not stressed it very much online lately because I don't want to get into the debates that happen. But basically what I will do is dial this in like a radio station. Uh, and I'll just spin the dial and you get a feel. So this is where it defaults. So I might not like that, but let's go down low. And then I'll just do a, a yes or, you know, but good, better, best sort of a thing. So what you're doing is you're actually dialing in the low resonance frequency of the cab. So it's the way that it feels. When you play with it in a room, you can really hear this a lot. I'm not sure how much of it comes across uh, when you do it direct, and especially because I'm wearing headphones right now. It's kind of hard to feel it. <laughs> but uh, what I'll do is this. So I end up on this particular mix, this particular cab, with this particular amp, uh, I ended up here. Now I might feel that's a little excessive. Now this is something you just dial in by ear, or I do. This is where I ended up. So you can see I only lowered it a teeny little bit, and then it will sound more like this. Now, all different amps are going to sound different, and just to give you a little bit of um, a contrast, I'm going to show you what I did here. This is using uh, the same... Uh, collection of own hammers. This is an IR I dialed up with the uh, EVL. You can see I have a Royer 121, SM57, and the CMD70 in here. It's the same basic formula that I just showed you. But what you'll see when you come over to the speaker tab 
is uh, right now this is here. When it defaults in, let me restore the default values. This is the way it would come up. It would sound with humbuckers. It sounds like this. <laughs> too much yeah, no, this will sound a little bit more like my EQ which isn't a bad sound um, but watch what happens when I change this which fits what I want to do. So it just gives you an example of um, the way that I'm approaching this. I hope that helps you. Um, it gives you a little demo of what I've been doing with Cab Lab. Um, and I hope that helps you. And that's it. If you have any questions, comments, or anything else, uh, feel free to contact me. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.